Gurdeep Singh. Uh, he has come to take the session, uh, this 11.32 one session that is your overview of, uh, uh, you know, uh, that is uh, Android and also setting up the environment as well as he will be uh, giving you that how to create the Android project uh, using some interface, uh, user interface control. So, um, um, uh, he is here with us and he is a very uh, good uh, experience on this app development course. Uh, so I welcome you, Gurdit, here, and uh, I'm sure that uh, he will be, uh, you know, his uh, uh, delivered class or expert talk will be beneficial to you. Uh, another thing I just wanted to tell you that uh, I have told that on 23rd, um, he had only the session on uh, uh, shared preferences screen handling. Then uh, actually it will be difficult for him to take it on Saturday. So what we will do on the Friday, we will have just 9 to 10.30 uh, classes so that we can just complete in that session only. He needs only one to one and a half hour uh, session in the morning. And after that, we will see that on Saturday we should continue or not, right? So that I want to uh, tell you. So Mr. Gurdit is here. Okay, now uh, uh, sure. you can come here and take the session. Thank you. So I think yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Screen sharing would you be start? Okay, so first of all, welcome you all on this session on Android. So I'm Gurdit Singh from uh, Punjab Engineering College. I'm there as an assistant professor in computer science. So let's start with the Android. So uh, if anybody can hear me, can anybody tell me that uh, what is the meaning of Android? From CEO to level one, so it's open session. It's not a competition right now. So anybody knows about the definition of an Android? We can continue with that. Okay, so uh, let it be key. I will think that you will not be uh, able to find what is the definition of Android. So let me uh, give you a definition of Android. So Android is not an operating system, first of all. So Android means, the basic definition of Android means a machine which can talk to a human. That is called Android. So you can take it as a robot or you can say as a mini computers. You can take an, any example. So that thing is called an Android. So Google owns a name of Android in the name of uh, like uh, the machine which can interact with the human in any other language or any of the, uh, you can say audio or visual uh, backfeed. So now let us uh, give an overview that what is the Android and how the Google knows the, uh, the name. So starting with the Android, so uh, first of all, the Android, it's an OS by the Google, which is an open uh, software platform and uh, uh, it is available for different, different mobile devices. It is based on a Linux kernel. So it is not a Windows based uh, kernel. So it's a Linux based kernel, which is developed by Google and later on OHA, that is Open Handset Alliance, acquires the uh, Android. So Android was specially designed to design the Android applications only. So now till date, so there are about 4 million. So this is actually a, uh, you can say a past uh, number. So now it crosses to trillions of uh, uh, apps in the Android market. So you can search any of the apps on the Android market. So uh, because of the Android uh, of an open source, so it is easy to use and you can also develop an application free of cost. 
so what is the origin of android so firstly the android was originated or you can say it is founded by paul alto in california in october 2003 by andy rubin rich miner and nick sears and chris white who worked for the google as a developers so these were the four persons who actually uh, uh, came uh, to a knowledge about uh, android so they have developed or they have founded the android as a operating system in late 2003 and later on google had well or you can say or uh, google has purchased the android uh, as a software in 2005 so now 2005 onwards google uh, owns the android software so mainly the android uh, is based on a uh, java language so i think um, you uh, know about java because the prerequisite of knowing the android is java so anybody is not comfortable with the java i don't think that uh, the person is able to uh, recall what is android or how the android works so that's a basic prerequisite of android that you should know java so android has its own virtual machine so virtual machine named as a dvm so uh, if you recall about uh, that uh, the uh, if uh, uh, the app uh, is keeps on uh, crashing so it generates an error as some dvm error so that dvm the full form of dvm is dalvik virtual machine so every app inside the android uh, smartphone works in in its own environment so the apps are isolated from other apps so that is why it is called a virtual machine so which is executing on a android platform only because that dvm is designed for a android purposes or android applications so now the oha that is open heads and alliance so they come uh, to a uh, uh, a standard that several companies has actually formed a organization on uh, late number 5 2007 so they have uh, uh, come to a conclusion that we have to make a open source software so that uh, many of the small mobile devices or a smartphone can work on a common platform so it was the first android beta which was released on Mumba, uh, november 12 2007 so here you can see that in uh, 2007 so the first beta android version was released so this uh, slide actually uh, tells you about the oha that is open headset alliance so open headset alliance is a business alliance to of a firm to develop open standard for mobile devices only so it devotes uh, to advancing the open standards for mobile devices so that anybody can code and everybody can publish their own apps on the store it also develops technologies uh, such as if which will be significantly lower cost of developing and distributing mobile devices and services so that's a basic uh, you can say a uh, standard which has been opened by the open headset alliance also the open headset alliance includes various uh, you can say companies so the companies you can name any of the companies till today now so companies like asus intel nvidia vodafone ebay huawei any of the uh, you can say companies they are all associated with the oha that is open headset alliance so they have uh, come to a conclusion that they will uh, 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 support the oha on the, on the open uh, sources applications so based on the android so android has various uh, versions associated with it so it was first uh, uh, beta release was uh, released on november 15 2007 so later on the stable version were released as alpha and beta so a b c so they have named uh, on a uh, in a uh, you can say alphabetical order so a b c d and uh, up to so on so the first uh, two that is a and b was the alpha and beta in phase so they have no their names associated with the android so they have a stable version named uh, after uh, uh, c that is cupcake which was released in uh, april 2009 so uh, from cupcake onwards they have uh, their own name uh, that is d for donut eclair e f for froyo g for gingerbread honeycomb and so on so till now we have received a uh, uh, android version as latest by uh, in uh, 2018 named as pi so android pi is the latest version so as you can see the trend so each and every year so they have released a new uh, version uh, of android so starting from a till now we have uh, reached uh, till p so p is for pi android pi 
so if we go into deep so what is the android architecture so i will uh, discuss here the four basic layers of android so how the android was built and uh, what are the what is the architecture behind it so there are four layers so first layer is called application layer second layer is called application framework third layer is called libraries and runtime and fourth one is called kernel so let us discuss one by one by visualizing the stack so this is a stack that will be uh, uh, related to the android so as you can see the red uh, highlight so that red color uh, uh, gives you the idea about the linux kernel so that's actually a heart of the android so here you can see that uh, display driver camera driver bluetooth driver and various various other drivers are there so you can use them by using their drivers but you can not you cannot alter the code and moving above we have libraries associated with the basic drivers and we have a separate uh, you can say a region for a android runtime so android runtime uh, is kind of a thing that will be discussed in the later slides so that's a separate area where the uh, android code will be able to run and the uh, moving above we have application framework so in the application framework we have active manager windows manager and various other manager associated with the android code so this is a layer where the application framework will be designed and moving above we have application where we have a design or ui which can interact with the human or you can say which can interact with the user so let us discuss uh, each and every layer uh, in detail one by one so first layer was uh, which is in the bottom it was a kernel that is linux kernel so that linux kernel supports a display driver camera driver bluetooth driver various other architecture so where the architecture uh, is based on a linux 2.0 kernel so this is a old version of a kernel so uh, now is these days it has been updated to latest version of a kernel so this layer is a core of uh, android architecture you can say it's a heart of uh, android which provide the services like power management memory management security and etc it also helps in the software and hardware binding for better communication so various other drivers which are responsible for booting up the hardware so all the libraries that are there uh, as a driver is located at the kernel level moving above we have uh, native libraries so native libraries as uh, media framework sqlite sgl ssl uh, free type open uh, gl so these are the libraries which are there in uh, uh, android so and the all of the libraries are actually written in c and c++ languages all of the native languages so these libraries cannot be accessed directly so many are the libraries like the lab, uh, web uh, library to access the web browser libraries for android and video format etc so uh, uh, to uh, run any of the libraries you require some library which are there already there in the android so these are the libraries which are there in the android and you cannot change the code you can say a source code of the native libraries but you can access by some uh you can say uh by some interfaces so inside uh, that thing we have also have a android runtime so that runtime requires android core libraries and dvm so i have discussed with the dvm so dvm is a dynamic virtual machine so android runtime was specially designed for android to meet the needs of running in an embedded environment where you have limited battery memory and cpu so here you can actually Uh, able to run the apps in the android environment which is actually a virtual environment for android so dalvik is a process uh, virtual machine in google operating system is a software that runs an apps and android uh, on android devices so this is uh, this will be running on only the android devices so the pro, uh, the programs are commonly written in a java and are compiled in a bytecode so uh, purely the to access the core libraries and uh, to run the dvm you require a java so that java uh, code will be uh, you can say uh, write in uh, the front end and you can compile back into a bytecode to execute it so moving further we have also have a application framework So application framework has uh, many of the managers. So as you can see in this slide, activity manager, window manager, resource manager, location manager, telephony manager. We have uh, n number of managers. 
So all are written in a Java programming language, and the application framework is a toolkit where these all application will use. So these application include uh, the ones that comes with the phones like home application or the ho or phone application. So these are the manager which are there already there inside the Android. So all the apps use the same framework as the same APIs. So uh, if you are using uh, say uh, location manager, so some location manager is using some API version. So that uh, API version should be supported by the corresponding uh, smartphone. So if the smartphone is having a version uh, uh, lower than the desired uh, API level which for the location manager, so that app will not able to work. So it should be greater than or equal to the version uh, which is uh, which is being designed for a particular manager. So that smartphone should be uh, of capable of. So moving further, we have application layer. So in the application layer, that's a kind of a UI or you can say a UI for the application. So we have home, dialer, SMS, IAM, browser, album, clock, email, and number of apps. So it includes the home application like uh, the contact browser and apps, all of the applications like camera, Google Maps, uh, browser, SMS, calendar, contacts. So they are all native apps. So these application works with the end user with the help of application framework to operate. So this is the application layer so through which we can interact with the hardware. So here we are also having a gist of uh, our knowledge that uh, this application layer will work only when we coded our application in a Java environment. So Java is the middleware between the UI that is a human interaction and with the backend or with you can say with interaction interacting with the any of the hardware. Obvious, there are some security uh, uh, things which are being added in uh, Android. So Android is kind of a multi-process system in which each application run its own process. So its own process, it means it in, in, in each of the environment, its own environment that is in the DVM. So most security uh, uh, between the application and the system is enforced at the process level through which the standard facility, uh, the standard Linux facilities such as the user group IDs that assigned to the applications. So there are some, uh, uh, you can say, uh, rules and regulations which are there for the security. So the Android has actually uh, empowered the security uh, patches. So they have also uh, releasing a security patches uh, by month to the various Android devices. So they have uh, facilities so that nobody can hack or you can say nobody can have a full access uh, on the Android, you can say smartphone. So it is designed to have a multi-layer security. So there is not a single layer. So there are multi-layers for a security, which provides a platform flexibility. And when the attacker attacks to uh, attempts to attack on a device, the Android platform helps to reduce the portability of the attack. So the attack will not be possible because of the multi-layer thing. So now, uh, moving on uh, further. We have some key points uh, of the Android uh, security. So key points we have to note down that we have a design review where the security model is designed. It will be reviewed by the developers so that risk, uh, risk level may be very less. The code review and the penetration testing. The goal of this code is to review to check the system strongness against the various penetration testing technologies. Open source and the community review. So Android users open source technologies that have significant external reviews such as the Linux kernel. And last one is the incident response. So uh, the Android team enables the rapid uh, mitigation of vulnerabilities to ensure that the potential risk of all the Android users are minimized. So they can't eliminate, the, but they can minimize the security risks. So obviously, using the Android, we have some advantages and uh, limitations uh, with that. So what are the major advantages is that uh, we have a ability for everyone to customize the Android uh, platform. It lets to you choose what kind of hardware you can use. It has a better app market as compared to other vendors, a more mature platform, and it supports all the Google services uh, ranging from Gmail to Google Reader. Obviously, there are some disadvantages. So one of the disadvantages is that the Android market has less control of the manager. Sometimes there are some malware in the uh, market, Android market. So Android market is actually, uh, uh, you can say, a repository where the all APKs or all the uh, uh, apps which are there. So they have a very less control by the manager. So some malware can be inserted 
in the app play store so there that's a main disadvantage because of the less control a lot of process running in the background which reduces the battery life and quickly drains so that's a major issue because uh, the android sports a multi uh, processing uh, technique so in the multi processing so uh, the processes are running at the background so when you run uh, uh, different different processes at the background so obvious that uh, requires uh, uh, computational power so that computation power is drawn out from the battery so which is uh, drained quickly so it also have a inconsistency with the design among various other apps so when the api level or you can say the version changes so that app may not support the uh, android uh, apps more so moving further we have some limitations so limitations is that uh, we have to uh, develop in a java only because that's the prerequisite of a uh, android so android sdk is also required so android sdk is a uh, sdk is a software development uh, toolkit where uh, you can actually uh, write or you can say actually edit uh, the your project and you can actually run that particular uh, file on your smartphone and it also requires a continuous internet connection so that is a limitation for uh, using the android in the further uh, in future mm -hmm. So obvious, uh, we have a, uh, uh, a large uh, support for the Android because uh, as we are having uh, Android uh, applications in the uh, in the Play Store or you can say in the Android market. So we have uh, lots of lots of applications. So uh, you can install any one of them and you can ready to use because of the uh, you can say open source software. So anybody can code it and anybody can uh, uh, push the uh, uh, that compile code onto the uh, uh, the Play Store and anybody can install it to uh, get the features. So this is uh, regarding uh, the Android applications. So how the Android was uh, evolved from uh, scratch till now, and what are the you can say uh, layers which are there associated with the Android. So these are the references you can refer it down. You can actually write it down so that you can actually get a knowledge about what is Android and what is an uh, how the Android works. So this, these are the simple three references. You can uh, crawl it out. And I think uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, the main overview of the Android, that how the Android works. So if anybody has having any doubts regarding the Android introduction, you can simply ask me. I'm open uh, for another minutes. <laughs> Okay, so let's move further. Uh, let us start uh, now with the uh, that uh, how uh, you can say uh, the how we can install the Android and Android Studio. So first of all, let me take into a uh, website. So you can start with the Google. So on a Google, you can search for Android SDK. So here the Google opens and you can write as Android SDK. So in the net Android SDK, so you will be uh, redirecting to the uh, web page of uh, the Google. So at the very first, you can say uh, link, the Android Studio, you can click on it which says Android, uh, download Android Studio and SDK tools, you can click on it. So it will open the Android Studio page. So here you can see a download button. So here you can download uh, the latest version of Android Studio. So after downloading this and uh, after installing this, you will be redirecting to this kind of environment. So this is the environment you will be able to view that uh, uh, how the Android internal, uh, uh, the coding of Android looks like. So after downloading it and after installing it, it will take another, uh, say, uh, half an hour to uh, be stabilized because it will also download the SDK versions, latest versions. And uh, that SDK versions, if you want to download it, you can simply crawl down and you will find this uh, page at the very last uh, page. So this thing uh, shows that uh, the Android Studio IDE with the EXE extension, which is of size 927 MB, 
and if you don't want uh, to be installer you can also download a zip so that zip will be downloaded and you can simply just extract it and ready to use so there is no need to install the separate uh, you can say android studio so that uh, has a uh, uh, the size of approximate 1 gb so you can download it uh, according to your uh, the operating system size so if you are using uh, as windows 64 bit you can simply use uh, these two links any of the two links if you are using uh, windows 32 bit so you can download this 32 bit although 64 bit also supports 32 bit uh, versions but it will be recommended that if your uh, system supports 64 bit so you can download any one of them either exe or a zip and if you are on a mac or a linux you can download the corresponding uh, uh the files so these are some of the uh, things so these are the requirements so minimum requirement for a windows so since my system is on windows so i will uh, definitely tell you about the windows so minimum uh, version uh, is windows 7 so windows 7 and above with 32 or 60 bit architectures that is actually minimum uh, supportable by the windows of this uh, android studio and minimum of 3 gb ram is required up to uh, actually it is recommended as it, it has it should be of 8 gb ram but if your system is having 4 gb of ram it will able to run but it will not give you a much better performance as the 8 gb variant gives you so uh, in this uh, we have a android emulator where you can uh, uh, run your uh, android code so that emulator runs on a, 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 you can say a virtual uh, memory so that virtual memory is actually a uh, your ram so that RAM uh, will be occupied as 1 GB for running the Android emulator only. And we have to uh, get uh, approximately 2 GB of disk space for having uh, uh, this uh, big uh, uh, installer. And 4 GB is recommended with the division as uh, 500 MB for IDE and 1.5 GB of Android SDK and some simulator, or oh, sorry, emulator system images. And we have to support approximately in, with the minimum resolution of 1280 by 800 uh, pixels. So this is the minimum requirement for the Windows. So same with the Mac, if, if somebody is uh, running on a Mac uh, machine. So this is a minimum requirement and for the Linux also. So this is the minimum requirement for the Linux. So if anybody is uh, having a minimum uh, of this thing, so that will, person will be able to run the Android Studio with no doubt. So uh, as you have a link, so at the very first page of this thing, so after downloading this and after installation, uh, it will take another, uh, say, half an hour So for the Android SDK tools and emulators and every other thing. After that, you will be uh, having this kind of uh, uh, icon at the taskbar. So simply click on it. So this will enable. Let's go here. Right to page. Okay. 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 So here you can see a, a small icon at the uh, taskbar. So after clicking on uh, uh, the taskbar, so this Android Studio will be able to run. So Android Studio after uh, the installation, so this is the first screen that you will be able to view. So what is the Android version that Android Studio, so you are having a 3.2.1 and you can start simply start with the new project. And after that, some uh, if you want to import the existing project, you can uh, open the existing project. And you can check the version control and any other thing. So you can also configure uh, as the SDK manager. So software development kit uh, manager is there. So what version you want to uh, make your own uh, application. So that application should support uh, Android, KitKat, Lollipop, Marshmallow, uh, Nougat, Oreo, or any Pi uh, uh, version. So that corresponding SDK version will able to download that particular API version for that. So if it is, uh, if you want that uh, it should, uh, uh, that your app will be able to run on a latest version of Android. So simply run the Android SDK. So here I will show you that how it looks like. So after clicking on the Android SDK platform, so here the all of the, you can see that uh, the uh, API levels uh, will be displayed. So here I have installed Android Marshmallow. Uh, as you can see here, it is checked. 
Android now got as 7.1.1 and Android version as 8.1 as a Oreo. So I have installed three uh, Android images in this uh, Android SDK. So you can uh, start with the Android 9 also. So uh, with the latest API, you can uh, run the latest code which are there, or you can say you can run the latest uh, libraries which are there for the uh, Android Pie. So after installing all the things, so we can simply start with the Android Studio. So simply clicking on the start with the Android Studio, just click over there. So this new, uh, uh, you can say a window will be opened. Here you can see that uh, um, we have um, uh, application name. So the uh, here you can suggest the application name. So suppose if, if I want to have an application name as ni triple t r underscore test. So this is my application name will be will be displayed after installation at a uh, as a text uh, below the icon. So here is the co company domain. So company domain should start with the com dot example or you can say suggest any of the uh, 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 keyword. So example dot say ni triple t r. So this is a, actually a domain which is a company oriented. So I suppose if uh, the domain is like google.com, so uh, it's like uh, uh, the how the google.com will be able to search over the internet. So it's not like it will uh, go for a uh, name by the name Google and it will uh, go into a domain of com. So the whole URL will be crawled from a backwards. So com, then Google, then www. So here you can see that uh, we have to put com.example.nrtripletr. So this is a domain that we have to uh, develop our app in a commercial uh, website, or you can say a commercial app. So com is there, dot example. So a domain is specified as an example. And inside the domain, we have a uh, uh, domain name as, or on domain name as nrtripletr. And after suggesting this domain name, and after suggesting the application name, we should uh, also look into the uh, project location. So this project location should not contain any white spaces because whenever there is a white space, so uh, the application will not be able to run. After having this, all the three things, uh, you can uh, click next, and you will be redirected to another page as this thing. So it will ask you about the target Android devices. This page ka? So here you can see that uh, we have a different Android devices. Uh, so first of all, you have to suggest to, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, crux of uh, Android that uh, which application runs on which platform. So if it is oriented towards a smartphone or a tablet, you can simply check on this. If it is on a Wear OS, that is a smartphone a watch. So you can simply check on this. If it is an Android TV based application, you can simply check on this. Android Auto as in the, uh, we can see uh, as automobile in uh, well, many of the cars, we have Android uh, Auto uh, uh, SDK installed. So if the application is regarding that, you can simply tick on this or Android things. So Android things is kind of a IOT that is internet of things. So if the uh, device is supporting the IOT, so you can simply uh, run that uh, uh, hardware on the Android. So uh, the motive of this session is to create an application on a smartphone only. So we are uh, now uh, able to uh, just stick on this smartphone and tablet. And after that, we have to select the minimum version. So that minimum version of that, as you can see here, is the API 14. So API 14 supports uh, Android 4.0, which is actually a ice cream sandwich. So that's a name code for a uh, Android uh, 4. So here you can see that the minimum, if you select the minimum version, so that means beyond 14, or you can say 13 uh, below or 14 below, so that application will not be able to support those devices. So if you support, uh, if you select as Android API version 20, so what it means, so below 20, so that application will not support those devices which are running on Android, uh, you can say uh, KitKat, Jelly Bean, or Ice Cream Sandwich. So we have to start with the minimum version because we want to support our application in uh, n number of devices. And after that, selecting uh, this uh, minimum version, you can simply click on the next button. So here you can see uh, different different uh, views. So first uh, views is called uh, basic activity, bottom navigation activity. So this is kind of a screenshot which is available uh, uh, to you. 
so this uh, kind of a uh, screenshot will be applied uh, according to your need so if you want uh, this floating button so you can start with the basic activity if you want a uh, navigation at the bottom you can start with the navigation property and if you want nothing or to be clean very clean you can start with the empty activity and after scrolling down we have other uh, uh, activities also fragment with the view model full screen activity google ad mob activity if you want to uh, uh, push ads uh, 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 inside the application you can use the ad mob activity or you can use a Google Maps activity if you want uh, maps uh, to be loaded on a uh, Android. So moving down, we also have a login activity where the user and password fields and with the button already there. So there is no need to code how uh, this output should like. So simply use this thing and ready to go. We have also master detail flow, navigation drawer. So simply uh, scrolling from outwards left to the uh, middle uh, towards the right. So we have a navigation drawer. So if you want uh, this feature to be enabled in the Android, so simply use this activity. Uh, we have also have scrolling activity and settings activity. We are uh, having a uh, last activity name as tab activity. So since uh, uh, as a beginner, so I will not uh, suggesting that you can use any one of them, but you can start with the empty activity. So selecting with the empty activity, you can uh, click next. And after next, so uh, these are the two files will be created with the name as the name suggested. So first name is called uh, activity name. So that activity name is uh, here. The name as suggested by default is as a main activity. So this main activity has the extension of dot Java. So here you can see that uh, the activity uh, that is the first activity name will be main activity and the layout name. That layout name is actually a UI for the main activity. So how the UI looks like. So here you can see here, so this is a kind of a UI. So uh, the widgets you want to add buttons, radio buttons, check boxes, any other thing you want to add in this that will be contained in the layout. So that layout uh, has a name as activity main, which has a link with the main activity. So this main activity will be having extension as dot Java and main uh, activity underscore main, uh, that is a layout name having extension of dot xml because we have to code the front end in the xml format and after uh, if you want to change uh, some main activity with some uh, other name or layout name with some other name you can do that also and after uh, adjusting the name and layout name uh, you can just simply click finish so after click clicking finish so it will take hardly a, a minute to open the environment so here you can see at the bottom so it is uh, running two processes at the uh, right, uh, back, back end so let's take a, uh, a pause so that it should stable so here it is saying that uh, some uh, this android underscore test that is our project is running and some configuration building is there so once it is get stable we will start with our coding so let's take another 15 to 20 seconds to get stable So yes, so here you can see that Android uh, is now stable. So here it is running uh, again. So for running. So here you can see that the build is successful. So uh, there is no, you can say errors so far. So here you can see that at the uh, left side, So here you can see at the left side, we have a project structure. So how the structures looks like. So inside there is a uh, root uh, folder name as app. Inside app, we have uh, three, you can say, uh, folders. First name is called Java, where the Java code will be there. Second one is the test. So output of the uh, this whole uh, 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 the program and the resources where we will uh, write our code as a 
you can say in the XML format, if you want that uh, the resource folder is in uh, uh, having uh, some icons or some, uh, you can say, layouts. So all of the uh, things are considered under a resource folder, RES for resource folder. We have also a folder name as manifest. So this is actually a heart of uh, your uh, uh, the Android app. So if uh, you can recall it, so let me first increase the font so you can able to view it. So I hope you can see uh, this uh, Android manifest.xml. So uh, here you can see that uh, this is the format of XML. So if any, if anybody, anyone is having a small knowledge about how the XML looks like and what are the codes or how we can write the XML, so that person is able to uh, grasp easily. Uh, so other persons, I can suggest that you can go with the uh, documentation of XML, the how we can write and how the XML will be able to read and write uh, are on, uh, you can say, coding. So here you can see that we are starting with the XML. So we have to start with the XML tag and ending with the XML tag. Inside the XML tag, we have a attributes name as version and encoding. So inside the version, so here version name as 1.0. So we are using XML version 1.0 and encoding as UTF-8. So pure English without uh, any of the, you can say, uh, uh, um, uh, any of the un uh, characters uh, uh, there. Here we can see also have a manifest uh, tag name. So inside a manifest tag name, so we have uh, uh, another tag name as uh, application. Inside the application, we have different different attributes which are corresponding to some you can say icon with the label, with the round icon, with the theme uh, you want to associate uh, uh, the, over the application and the activity name. So that activity uh, inside the application, we may have different different activities because we have to navigate from a, one activity to another activity. So that entry, so how many activities are there? What is the name of activity and uh, that activity correspond to the main activity or not? So we have to write all of the activity, you can say tags inside the application tag. So here you can see that we have only one activity name as main activity. So we have to start a tag with the activity and the name as dot main activity. So dot main activity means, so this dot means we are actually going uh, with the package name. So here we have package name as nitrtr.example.com. So this is our, you can say a package name, whole package name. So uh, uh, this is also associated with the uh, Java only because the packages are uh, the inbuilt features in the Java. So I will suggest you that uh, uh, just go with uh, uh, through the package of how the packages are declared inside the Java. So after that, you will be able to uh, know the package, what is a package. So here uh, uh, is uh, saying that dot main activity. So this is actually a Java file. So dot main activity suggests that it will uh, suffix all the package name. So this is a package name dot main activity. So here it is a main activity. After that, uh, the main activity should be main, which is actually a primary launcher. So whenever the application launches, the first activity should be opened up. It should be a kind of a launcher. So if it is not a launcher, that will be uh, that uh, you can say a front end or that activity will not be launched. So uh, if you want to launch as a main activity, just simply uh, write as a launcher with the file name, uh, or you can say just with the class name as a main activity. So uh, this is a, uh, you can say a heart of uh, the Android manifest or XML. So the Android uh, app should know. So how many activities are there? What are the different services or the uh, different, different uh, things which are there uh, inside the application? What is the API version and every other thing which is there? So all the things are included inside this. So after having, uh, updating the Android manifest or XML, we can move to the XML that is regarding the layout or the main activity dot Java. So inside the main activity dot Java file, so we have a package name. So uh, uh, we may have different, different uh, uh, Java files in the same folder. So if we want to pass one variable value uh, from one file to another file, so we, ha we have to make a package. So this is a first, uh, you can say a line which has to be there in each of the Java files. So package with the package name. So this package name should be same. 
so this package name after uh, having this thing so we can also import uh, the libraries so library name is android dot sport v7 app app um, uh, compact activity so app compact activity is kind of a you can say a class uh, which extends so this extends means it is inheriting the properties of uh, app compact activity in the main activity so main activity is actually a derived class of a app compact activity so here uh, in this we have a function name as on create with this thing so on create function is kind of a uh, main function of a, a main activity so here you can see that on in the on create function we have a super class so uh, through which we can uh, just pass uh, the whole bundle instance to the upper class so upper class is kind of a base class so from a we can also pass uh, the values from a derived class to the base class using super keyword and on create that is a function uh, inside the uh, 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 inside the uh, main uh, that is a base class so after that we have to set the content view so uh, how the content view looks like because we have already coded in a layout so uh, if we want to uh, to be viewed at the very first time so this main activity should be opened up if the main activity is opening it should open the layout so that layout is called using r dot layout dot activity main so that r is kind of a repository where it stores all the you can say variable with their names or with their values or any of the thing related to the android coding or you can say in the inside the project so this r uh, has a unique thing regarding uh, uh, the things uh, if we call r with the id we can simply use r dot id if we want to use r with the layout you can use r dot layout so here you can see that we are using uh, we want to uh, pass this content view as a layout so layout was defined so we have to just simply put r that is capital r dot layout dot activity name so my activity name was activity main so here you can see that so this will be corresponding to the layout which is been passed as a parameter to the set content view so after running this main activity at the very first time it will be able to open this layout file right so let's take a look inside the activity main uh, this so activity main is actually a xml file so xml file as you can see here so this is the actual uh, xml file of android so here you can see we have a, a graphical view of uh, uh, the android and we may also have a code level of this thing so how we are able to view so at the bottom you can see that there is a two tabs there are two tabs design and test text in the design you will able to view that how the ui looks like inside the text you will be able to view so what is the text behind it so as you can see here let me uh, so as you can see here so activity main also supports xml because the uh, extension is in xml so you have to start with the xml extension so inside the xml extension you will start with some layout so how it should be laying inside the layout we have some widgets so if you are not uh, uh, if you are new about the widgets so simply you can uh, avoid the text uh, interface you can go with the design interface and here you can see that we have a different different uh, uh, uh the widgets which are there inside the uh, android so if you want uh, uh, a button to be there so we have a button we have an image view we have a scroll view inside the text we have text view plain text password email phone and any of the text uh, you want right if you want a button button as an image button or a checkbox or a radio button or a, a switch button or a floating action button you can uh, simply uh, just drag and drop all the things so suppose if I want to add a button, so simply I will drag and drop where I want to desire. So here I want to desire. So I simply drag and drop over here. So that button will be added. So here you can see some red exclamation mark is there. So that uh, uh, suggest, uh, suggest us that if this view is not constrained. So it has only a design time position. So it will jump to zero zero at the rule less runtime unless uh, uh, you add some constraints. So here actually you can view this thing as uh, this position but due to its constrained nature so this button will be run or viewed at the runtime as this 
so you will be uh, feel amazed that uh, at the very first time i put the button at this position so why it is showing at the this position at the very uh, first corner of uh, this application it is just because of the layout so if we go to the layout uh, in the text mode so here you can see a underlined position of a button so this uh, represents that particular uh, widget is in the error so error is same yeah, that we have encountered in the design mode so let us uh, change the layout so inside this layout i will change layout as relative layout so uh, let me uh, uh, write you a simple thing so if i am not uh, able to recall what is the layout so it has the intelligence in build uh, in this ide and in the android studio so simply you can press control and space simultaneously one time so you, you can recall all of the things which are there uh, you want to recall so simply put uh, a control and space you will get all the things so here you can start with the relative layout so you can simply scroll down or up according to your desire so i want here as a relative layout so simply highlight it and press enter so here the relative layout is designed so here you can see relative layout is there so we have actually removed uh, this thing uh, button error which was in earlier uh, it was in error so we have removed the error so here the relative layout uh, is uh, having a property that uh, how the layout should like uh, should look like so here you can see if we go back to the design phase so here uh, how the our application looks like when we are able to run it so button is at the you can say uh, at above of the text view so we have to push it down so text uh, view is there button is there so inside uh, let us discuss first with the text view attributes so we have a layout and the height so these two things are common with each uh, you can say uh, widget so text view has its own layout uh, height and width button has its own layout height and width so we have a uh, thing related to uh, uh, the value which is there for the width or a height so wrap content means so uh, the uh, space which is required to adjust uh, within that particular uh, area as a width so it will wrap uh, accordingly if you want uh, uh, to uh, know about uh, uh, what are the attributes or what are the values which are by default which are there for the layout width so simply use again control and space you will have uh, a much more uh, 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 intelligence like wrap content match content or android or fill parent so match parent means so here you can see that the text view is under relative layout so uh, whatsoever the relative layout has a width and height so it will be able to match uh, the layout width according to its parent so here width is saying that it is having a match parent so here if we call as a match parent so it will adjust all the you can say width according to the parent so parent is uh, having a width alongside uh, horizontally so here you can see the highlighted one over the right side so here you can see the text view is uh, occupying the horizontal uh, thing uh, horizontal width full because the uh, of the property of the parent if you want to squeeze it that uh, i want to uh, uh, constrain uh, uh, the text view within that particular uh, area so uh, you, you can uh, go with the wrap content so the text which is like hello world so uh, how much is hello world is taking uh, uh, the space so it will be wrapped up by using the wrap content inside the um, uh, width so here uh, again the height is again in the wrap content because we don't want to increase the height uh, of the text view and another one you can also suggest a hard coded values also so here you want to suggest as a high, uh, width as say 500 dp so uh, or you can say 50 dp so here you can see we have a 50 dimensions or 15 pixel 50 pixels of the text view if you want to increase as 150 so you can see at the real time uh, we have a 150 uh, size of a text view if you go for a 250 so again 250 is there so you can also uh, use a wrap content uh, match parent or any of the desired value for a width or a height so it all the uh, depends upon the design of application that how you are uh, actually running 
or your, how you are actually uh, viewing uh, the UI. So here I'm just deleting it and uh, go for the wrap content. So uh, this thing I will delete and uh, i will also delete this thing so same thing uh, for the button so width and height as a rep content and a text as a button so this button has a name as a button which is uh, shown so here i will say say click me so this text will be shown at uh, if i am yeah so here you can see that click me button is there and that's a text over the button so now you can see that this button is actually uh, in the foreground of uh, text view. So that is not actually uh, 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 the layout should like. It should be below the text view. So uh, uh, the below the text view, we have to get the ID of the text view. So uh, adding our ID inside the text view, you can just go inside the text view and you can just write ID. So it will suggest what kind of a thing you want. So the highlighted one, as you can see, ID, 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 all the things. So it will be highlighted according to the partial information you are giving to the IntelliSense. So we want to add a new ID. So you can just simply uh, press enter. And it will also just as add the red plus ID. Add the red plus ID means you are adding a new ID. So we are also adding a new ID slash with the ID name. So ID name as say TV1 as text view one as a small name. So TV1 is a name, or you can say a ID given to a text view uh, widget. And this button name is given to a button widget. So now our, uh, uh, that, uh, our you can say, the thing, uh, 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 the question arises that how we can align button below the text view. So you can simply go inside the button uh, part. You can just write as below so here you can see it is suggesting that you can use layout below so simply double click it or you can see simply uh, click it so android layout underscore below with the id as add the plus id as tv1 so here you can see in the real time so this button has been shifted below the text view of this right so here uh, we can uh, uh, tell uh, uh, anybody that uh, we have actually aligned our button below the text view. So uh, text view has other properties also. We can also increase the text size. We can also bold or italic or uh, we can change the color. So uh, if you want to increase the uh, text size, so you can use inside the text view as text size with capital S, text size as say 20 dp. So here you can see in the real time, it is according to a 20 dp uh, the, uh, thing. So if you want to change a color, so simply go for text color. So text color as say at the rate color, uh, or you can go with Android color, color as I want color to be red. So here it is a red. Or you can also suggest color as in a hexadecimal format. So if you want uh, text as a uh, uh, in a red color, so go for hash, which uh, denotes that it is a hexadecimal format, FF0000. So that's a red color, right? So, uh, or you can uh, suggest any other color and click on this red uh, square. So clicking on this, uh, the uh, color chooser will be opened and you can uh, uh, click on any other color you want, right? So here uh, is the color uh, I want to be on the text color. So simply choose it. And in the real time, th that particular color has a value as 2923 DC. So that's the color corresponding to this blue variant. So that will be corresponding to the text view because you have just added the text color inside the text view only, right? So this is the main thing uh, that will be uh, uh, regarding the first uh, beginner step of the Android. So here uh, you can see that they, we have a left panel, we have a middle panel, we have a right panel. So in the left panel, we have a, a project structure. In the middle panel, we have an editor. And the right side, we have a preview of uh, what we are doing. Right. So if we are moving to the left side, so we have a Java, 
because we are, all other things are written in a Java language. So inside a Java, we have a package name as n 9 triple t or underscore test. So inside a test, we have a main activity. So double clicking it, it will open the main activity dot Java file. Inside the res folder, that is a resource folder, we have multiple uh, folder name as drawable, layout, MIP map, and values. So inside the drawable, we have some icons uh, uh, which will be able to use uh, inside the uh, Android Studio or you can say inside the project. We have a layout folder. Inside the layout, we have activity main.xml. So this is a activity main.xml file. And we have a MIP map file. And we have some values with the XML name as color, strings, and styles. If we want to suggest more colors, so you can uh, write a color with the color name as a, uh, a colors.xml file. And you can start with the strings.xml. If you want to suggest string to be stored inside the XML, you can simply name the string name and uh, pass the value. And we have a style also as in uh, uh, defining what kind of a theme we want to use, whether you want uh, this title bar to be there or not. right? So these are the things which are there uh, inside uh, the Android uh, uh, Studio. So this is just a beginner level that how the uh, what will be the first Android uh, interface that will be we are looking upon that how it looks like and how the Android Studio you can say works. So later in this session we will talk about that how we can interact uh, the UI with the Java coding. So uh, in uh, the later session we will talk about the binding of the XML and the Java uh, files together so that we can make our own Android application. So till now, if anybody is having any further doubts, you can talk to me and uh, ask me any questions. I'm open with it. Okay, so we will meet at the next session. So till now, uh, I will suggest you that you should uh, download the Android Studio with the Java uh, uh, JDK uh, on your machine. And after that, you can uh, hands-on experience with the first example of that I have just started with. So you can take an example or you can take a uh, recall that how the Android environments looks like. So we'll meet out in the next session. Thank you. So we'll be uh, reaching here by 2 o'clock. So 2 to 4, we'll be having a session regarding uh, uh, regarding the Android uh, creation project and what are the different uh, commands we'll be able to control the Android environment only. So please gather around 2 o'clock sharp.
दो दो चार चार बंदे ही बस थोड़ी अभी कौन से कॉलेज है कर दो 
Okay, so welcome all. So welcome to another uh, tutorial on uh, Android Studio. So in this session, we will talk about that how we can actually interact with the UI and uh, how we can uh, get a response uh, from the UI. So uh, in the previous uh, session, we had just talked about uh, what are the different layouts uh, we should have a relative layout, linear layout. We have another layouts. We have widgets like text view, button, check boxes, radio buttons. We have do uh, that also. So in this, uh, in the previous session, we had just added two uh, widgets. One is called text view and other is called button. So text view is uh, simply a text view, or you can say a label in which you can just add some text inside it and on a button. So button uh, is a widget also, which on which you can perform some activity. So activity like click or uh, any other thing. So now uh, in the previous uh, 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 video also, uh, just uh, hang on a second. Connected. Okay, so I hope you can see uh, this slide, uh, this scene. So here you can see that uh, we have two widgets. Uh, one is called text view and one is called button. So in the text view, we just add some text inside it and on the button, you can perform some action. So action is regarding click event, right? So, uh, so now here we have to add some uh, IDs because uh, we have to bind this uh, a text view and a button inside the Java. Why we need is uh, because uh, 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 we have to perform some action and uh, based upon some action, we have to uh, uh, run some code. So for binding, we need some IDs because uh, here we have uh, XML and at the back end we have Java. So binding, we need some IDs. So here we have ID as in the text view as TV one because we have uh, previously we have added it. And another one is a button. So these are the two ideas from which we can call or we can bind uh, uh, this XML uh, variables or XML IDs with the Java. So after defining this text views uh, and the button with their IDs, we can simply go into the Java coding. So in the Java coding, we have uh, uh, on create function. So in the previous session, we had talked about the on create function. So on create function is a kind of a main function inside the main activity which is responsible for viewing the main activity that is the layout file. So that's the first UI you will see whenever the main activity will be fired up. So inside the main activity, we have to bind those IDs inside the uh, on create function. So uh, how we can do it? So first of all, we have to call the uh, classes uh, according to the widgets. So uh, our, uh, we, are, we are having two widgets. One is called text view and one is called button. So we have to call these widgets with their class names inside the Java. So we have to call text view, text view as say T1. So here text view is not a, a widget. This text view is actually a class of uh, Java. So T1 is just a uh, object of that class. So this is not actually a widget. This is, this is just a class name of a uh, Java. Another widget uh, we uh, had, was button so button b1 so this button b1 uh, uh, this uh, is also a object of class button so we have to bind this b1 and t1 with the ids which were there in the xml file so uh, how we can do it so we have to first of all uh, call it as t1 first of all i i will write and i will explain what is the meaning of that statement so t1 equal to in brackets with capital T as text view, 
and find view by id as r dot id dot uh, tv one. And again, B1. Button point B1 ID. So now here you can see that uh, I have just added two lines. One is uh, T1 equal to text view, uh, as in open and close parentheses. And uh, uh, again, and find view by ID R dot ID dot TV1. So r dot id dot tv one is same as that. Uh, just we had uh, talked about r dot layout dot activity main. So this r dot layout dot activity main main suggests that r uh, is a common thing, and the thing we want to uh, use is a layout inside the set content view. But inside the find view by id, we have to uh, call the uh, call the variable by its id. So here is, we are saying that find view by ID. It will find by its ID. So IDs are stored inside R. So we have to call all the IDs with the name as TV1. So this TV1 is a ID which were there in the XML. So I will show you what is TV1. So in the entire Excel uh, activity main dot XML file, here you can see. So this is TV1. So this TV1 is now bounded with T1. So now output of find view by ID with the r dot id dot t1 as a uh, parameter. So the output of this is kind of a uh, view, but the return type should match with the property of t1. So property of t1 is what text view. So we have to typecast it back so that the view should not be equal to text view. So for that we are just typecasting the whole view with the text view because uh, the t1 was in the format of text view. Same with the case of button. So this will uh, uh, this thing will return view, and B1 was button. So this view is not equal to B1. So we have to typecast it back. So for the typecasting, we are having button as open and close, uh, just like uh, uh, we did in a C or C plus plus, just make to make it a int or to make it a float. So here we are just ch changing the view with the view uh, that we have uh, got in a B1 uh, object. So we have to typecast. It back with the object reference as in uh, button. So after that, uh, 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 the main question arises that will it be possible to get uh, um, the event which is uh, performed, which was performed on a button? So if the uh, we are able to find the uh, activity performed on button, then we are actually control the whole uh, you can say structure. So how we can do it? So the thing is, first of all, we have to create a uh, listener on the button. So as you uh, recall it in the Java in the core Java. So if you want a applet or any other uh, UI on a Java, so you need some listeners according to the events. So here we have a button. So on the event we perform some listener. So here we are. I'm uh, writing as b1 dot set on click listener and uh, initiating with new event as on click listener. So this is a event on which we are performing or on which we are able to find uh, that uh, this uh, this kind of listener will be performed on b1. So b1 dot dot means you are actually using the methods inside uh, the button class. So button class has a method as on click listener and initiating with the new view on on click listener so that the uh, the Java should uh, able to listen. Inside this function, there is a inbuilt function name as on click. In which view uh, with the v as uh, object is defined. So this on click function is a function which is there in the on click listener. So inside the on click function, we have to uh, you can say uh, write some code so that uh, the action uh, will be uh, called. So the overall motive of, of this uh, whole program is uh, just like we, if we take an example. My example is suggest that if I click on this button, so this kind of a button, if I click on this button, so my text view, just like hello world, uh, the text should change. So first of all, we have to find or we have to uh, bind those two text boxes, uh, text views and uh, the button inside the Java. And after that, we have to check whether uh, the user has clicked the button that is click me button or not. 
if it is clicked then what kind of uh, function or what kind of uh, thing you want to perform on a text view so now uh, if we come back to java coding so uh, what we did uh, uh, till far is that uh, we had just binded the text views with the uh, ids performed and listen some action performed on button and inside the button we have to just change the text inside the text view so the text view was binded with the t1 so we not able to call tv1 because this is kind of a id which was there in the xml so java will not able to read that xml uh, id so we have to bind with the java object so that is t1 so we will call t1 instead of tv1 because we just binded the tv1 with the t1 right so here inside is we will just write uh, tv1 sorry t1 dot set text say happy birthday right so uh, how uh, this uh, function works so whenever b1 is clicked it will suggest t1 to set a new text as happy birthday right so now in the main activity we just had a default text as hello world so this text view has a hello world at the by default so whenever the uh, app is opened this hello world will be displayed but whenever the user clicked on a click me function or click me button the text of this hello world will be replaced by the new text that is happy birthday so let's test it out so this is a run uh, uh, button so um, i actually i have a uh, smartphone with me and i have connected uh, uh, my smartphone via usb so via usb uh, if it is connected successfully if you able to run this button so this dialog box will be po uh, popped up so inside is uh, it will uh, show you that uh, th uh, these are the uh, uh, android devices are been attached so uh, in this android version so uh, after selecting those uh, uh, you can say uh, smartphones you can just press okay so it will push the code inside the smartphone so this is a you can say a view of my smartphone so here you can see the gradle building is running at the very bottom so once it is finished it will uh, uh, open the app inside my smartphone so let's just take for uh, 15 to 20 seconds so it will be able to run on my smartphone yeah so you can see here so app is launched on my smartphone automatically so here you can see that uh, whenever i called main activity as my front end so here you can see hello world text is there because the default hello world was there so if i click on this just uh, look here if i click on this the text view with the text will be changed here happy birthday is there right so what it means so uh, the uh, we have actually successfully binded uh, the uh, text uh, you can say the xml uh, ids with the java uh, uh, java objects after successful uh, binding we just added a listener on a button and on a button uh, a listener we just perform some action as a click so on inside a click we just updated the text of a text view so here you can see the full code which is running successfully on my smartphone so this is overall the code first of all we just binded the text view and the button button with the listener and inside the on click listener uh, on click function we just updated the text with the new text so this is the whole you can say uh, basic of uh, the android how the android works 
so this is just a first application just like uh, we uh, just used to taught uh, students uh, with the c or c++ so uh, the first program will be the print of statement that how the hello world will be printed on uh, on uh, on the screen so this is the first you can say of uh, 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 example of showing that how the android uh, works so if anybody has doubts that uh, this thing is not clear to you exactly the way i just taught so you can simply ask me a question So although I think you may have difficulty at your own side because uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, the compilation and the building process may take some long time because uh, uh, your system has some uh, you can say a restriction because of uh, I just taught, uh, tell you about that uh, your system is not capable of compilation uh, just because of you have maybe have a low RAM or uh, your hard disk may be using uh, with the hundred percent usage. So that is why it is taking some time. But now at my end, I have a very fast machine. So that is why I am able to build uh, on time. So uh, uh, take your time. Just uh, write this code inside your uh, Java application and uh, test it out whether this uh, particular piece of code will be able to run on your machine or not. Machine in the sense smartphone. So if it is uh, you, if you are uh, if the uh, system is not able to find your smartphone, then there is another way. Another way is. Uh, the emulate emulate android emulator so android emulator is kind of a, a view that is uh, uh, given to you so that you can actually test it out that how the application uh, runs inside the android environment without having uh, android smartphone so first of all you have to go uh, inside the tools and uh, uh, inside the tools you may have avd manager android virtual device manager the first the thing so android virtual devices uh, uh, will be popped up so here you can create your own virtual device so uh, just click on this button virtual device so you have to first uh, what category you want tv phone vr os or a tablet so uh, our uh, 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 coding is done in a smartphone so i will select phone and what about the phone so phone uh, may have different uh, screen sizes so here uh, the screen size is, is shown to you 5.5 inches 6 inches 5 inches 4 inches 3 inches and uh, according to your need so uh, whatsoever you have done just uh, have uh, uh, the um, you can say the phone selection so you can just select it and click next in the click next you can uh, just download what os you want inside the emulator so uh, this uh, android uh, this phone that is uh, nexus 5x uh, that I have selected so in the nexus 5x it just sports nougat oreo with the different different api versions 24 till 28 so you can download any one of them just clicking on any of the download button and it will ready to download all the system image file inside the emulator once it is installed you can just simply click next and ok after clicking that OK button, so uh, you can uh, run, uh, you can start with the run button over here at the very top. Just click over here and it will able to uh, run inside the emulator because uh, your phone is not connected uh, uh, on this uh, machine. So it will automatically detect that AVD machine is installed and AVD on the AVD your app will be able to run. So in this way, you can actually test it out uh, your android code without having a smart android phone so uh, i will suggest you one thing because uh, of uh, the android emulator because that emulator uh, requires also a virtual you can say a memory so that memory will be occupied from your ram so if you are already low with the ram so i don't suggest you that you will able to or you just uh, go with the android virtual device so it will be better to uh, just connect your phone with the, any of the machines and just uh, uh, push that code onto your smartphone. So it will be better for you. Because uh, also it will be in real time, you can actually get uh, uh, the real feeds from uh, the smartphones. Because in the emulator, the OS may run slow because of your system configuration. And it may vary with the speed with the different, different machines.
so i will suggest you that uh, just uh, install uh, all the drivers uh, corresponding to your smartphone maybe you have samsung or nexus or uh, oneplus or any other brand so just install that particular drivers inside your uh, system and ready to go and just push that code inside your smartphone so don't use any emulators if you are having low uh, uh, low ram if you are having 8 uh, gigs plus ram you can uh, uh, go with the emulator but i don't uh, think you may have uh, say 8 gb or 8 gb more uh, ram so i will suggest you that you just push your code inside the smartphone only so any doubt still here okay so let's do another activity uh, another activity is like can we add another uh, button inside uh, the same event so that uh, our uh, a uh, click listener may run over that because uh, just like a login button uh, just uh, hold a one thing so i just deleted all the code so here we have to write our own code in such a way that it should look like a login page right like username and password so we will go with the hard coded uh, 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 the string just like if the username is this and password is this hard coded value so if it is uh, done then we can go forward otherwise uh, we will show the error back to the user that user name and password doesn't match so here we are not dealing with any of the databases we are just uh, dealing with the hard coded strings right so for that we will go with the user name and password thing so user name first of all we have to just uh, think it out you can just uh, imagine uh, the how the uh, form looks like we have a text view with the text name as user name and uh, beside uh, that text view we have a edit text that is for input uh, text where the user can input the username and below the username uh, text we have a password and in uh, uh, besides that we have a password field and below that we have a button for submission so that uh, the username uh, or a password can be read out from a uh, from those boxes so let's uh, try one by one so first of all i will go for a text view with the layout uh, width as wrap content and height as wrap content so inside this i will suggest as text with as username right so first of all i just uh, write uh, all the things and then i will uh, tell you the setting of all the things so i need a a dict text so that the user can i did the text so there is another thing as hint hint uh, just is used for to show that uh, this field should contain a username or alphanumeric keywords inside this again we need a text view text view with the wrap content and wrap content and text view as text as uh, password and again we need a a dict text wrap content and hint as password so this hint is same as that of uh, hint in uh, uh, html if you click on uh, the input tag uh, the hint will be disappear right so we had a text view with the text name as username we have a, a dict text where the user can uh, enter the username again with the text view with the password and a dict text for a password input and we may require another thing another widget as button so button with the text as submit so we have all the required uh, widgets so you can see at the real time at the uh, if i zoom in so here you can see at the right side all the widgets are aligned at 00 position so the user will not be able to uh, read any of the widgets because uh, of the button which is actually foreground all the widgets so we have to al align each and every widget so uh, for aligning in, in each and every widget we may require some layout so one of the layout uh, which is defined inside the android xml is the android uh, the layout name as grid layout so what is grid layout so grid layout means just like you can uh, imagine that uh, just like a old calculator thing so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 uh, buttons were there 
so they are aligned in a grid so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 that numbers are aligned in a grid so we have to uh, perform that thing inside the uh, android also so first of all uh, if we are using a grid layout we have to suggest how many rows and how many columns we may require so here inside the grid layout tag because here the tag uh, just ends up so inside the tag we have to suggest the uh, uh, the number of columns and number of rows so for number of columns and number of rows so we have to call column count so we may require column 2 so number of columns as 2 and rows sorry not layout row row count as 3 so may, we may require 3 uh, rows and 2 columns right and we have to specify just like so it will be uh, uh, has, it will be like 3 by 2 matrix so in each and every cell we have to uh, suggest that this text view belongs to this cell so how we can do it we have to suggest the column as well as row number inside the views so inside the text view we have to set the what is the column number and what is the row number so inside this text view we will call layout row so row is as in the first row that will be started with zero and column layout column as zero so that will be a zero zero position inside the grid layout for a text view so i will just copy this two lines and paste in each and every widget so edit text this edit text suggests that the username should be there and the username should be besides this first text view so beside this text view means it is it should be in the same row but in a different column so row will be 0 and column will be 1 so as you can see in the real time username and the username as a field input is at the right side again text view so this text view should be below uh, uh, the first text view that is the username so that will be row 1 because that will be second row and column 0 right and again the password field row 1 column 1 so as you can see in the real time so we have actually uh, made a grid layout or you can say a table uh, kind of a layout in which each and every widget is aligned uh, in a straight line so as you can see here submit button we are not suggesting any submit uh, uh, button with the row and uh, column so uh, obvious we have to merge those two columns so that submit button should align at the center so layout row so row will be third and column will be first and we have to go for call span so just like as same function with uh, same attribute inside the table of html so call span 2 so here it will merge two columns in a single row so here after that we'll see that uh, uh, that all the uh, widgets are aligned in a perfectly table manner right so now uh, we have to suggest the uh, uh, ids because we have to check whether the user and password field on click button is same or not or it is actually authenticated or not so how we can do it we can do so we don't need any id of this text view because we don't uh, need uh, because uh, there is no need to change the text of this text view we just need to grab the text inside the edit text so here we will suggest for id as plus id as a uh, user so this is a new user id with the edit text right so i will just copy this one and go with the edit text of the second one which is having name as or id as pass so we have two edit text boxes with the name or id as user and other as pass so from this we can actually uh, uh, get the text inside the username and password so again uh, we want to add 
a name for a button so button as say b1 so uh, three uh, things are there because we are interested only three in three widgets the two are dead text boxes and one button so we have uh, uh, suggested the IDs corresponding to each and every widget, username in, password, as well as submit button. So what else we can do? So we have to bind these three things inside the Java, right? So we'll go inside Java. So inside the Java, uh, we will just replace this text view because we don't need text view. We need a dead text. So a dead text as say user and pass yeah or you can say username or password and button as say b1 so obvious it will generate an error of this because text view is not defined so i will just replace the text view with a dead text Find view by ID as user. And I will just copy this thing again and paste it as password, a dead text as pass. So remember, at the right side, it will be ID, and the left side, it will be the object of that class, which is there in the object. Oh, sorry, Java. Right? So B1 is uh, actually uh, remain same because uh, uh, we just had a, a button with a different name as B1. So here you can see the button name is B1. So this B1 and this B1 is not same because this is an object of a class and this B1 is a ID of the XML, right? So inside the B1, so we'll just performing the click action and we just delete this whole line because we don't need this thing. So first of all, we have to uh, check whether the username and password is uh, correct or not. So first of all, uh, uh, what we can do is we can do uh, uh, what is actually printed inside the text. Uh, you can say edit text, right? So for printing, there are two ways. Either you can um, uh, 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 you can um, uh, make an output on a console or you can uh, simply uh, uh, take an output on a smartphone if you want to take an output on a smartphone then you may need another text box or a text view inside this where the user and password field will be printed or there is another way if you want to print onto a console so that uh, the whole system uh, should have minimum uh, number of lines and number of codes so for that you may uh, go for log log dot e log means to print onto the console so that e represents so we have different versions as you can see here d e i v d is for debug e is for error i is for uh, uh, intent and v is for verbose so uh, sorry i is for information sorry so that d uh, is for debug error information and verbose so we'll actually go for an error because our uh, whole program has a minimum number of errors but may have different uh, meaning for debug information and verbose so we'll go for a e that is for error so as you can see if you highlight this one so here the some uh, explanation is uh, given so it requires two string messages as tag and message so this tag means or uh, kind of a label for a message uh, through which you can find that particular tag uh, whatsoever uh, they are called crawled into the console and it was included as api level one so till now the api level is 28 because the android pi is out so that api level is 28 so since uh, this log.e function is added in android level one so that e means it sends an error with the log message right so let's uh, take an example that how it looks like. So a log.e, it takes two inputs. One is a tag name and one is a message, right? So tag name, I suggest as, uh, uh, say, error. So this is just a tag name. And second input, or you can say second argument will be the output 
which is there inside the edit text or you can say the text uh, uh, the user has just given so for reading the text in the username and password field so you can go for uh, username dot get text or get edit text dot to string so this will return the text inside the edit text according to according to the call so i am calling username so to return the text inside the username you can just copy the same thing and paste it just below it by changing the field you want to print so password will be printed so now let's test it out that how this log.e looks like so in, at the uh, bottom you may uh, notice that there are several buttons one is called terminal build logcat profiler run and to do at the very bottom so we will go with the logcat because we are now just uh, pushing the uh, log errors inside the logcat so that's a kind of a console so logcat just click on it so it will open the logcat so inside the logcat just go with the error because uh, we are just pushing those uh, text views or text uh, uh, text uh, string text inside the log error so error is there so here we will just filter it out what kind of application we want to filter out so first of all we have to run our application so let's run it out So here you can see the application is launched and uh, with the grid layout it is actually uh, looking nice because all of uh, the things are aligned properly so username as a text view and username as a text field a did text again a text view of a password and password as a uh, a did text and there is a button as a submit button right so here uh, in the uh, log cat you can find uh, the activity so this is my activity and i want to filter it out with the error so error means it will generate all the errors or you can say all the errors related to all the application installed on your smartphone but you have to filter out only one application so for application you can select only the selected application so i have selected only one application over here so only one application uh, error will be filtered out right so let's test it out so my username is say user and password say as 1234 So since not is able to view you as a one two three four because you are not suggesting as password field as a password, you you are saying that password as a text, not as a password as a password, right? So uh, I will show you that how you can uh, change this password as a password so that uh, each and every character will be coded in a dot or an asterisk sign, just like a traditional uh, uh, password. So if I click on this, so here you can see in the log cat. so this uh, is an error so this is a tag name this is a tag name this error is a tag name and this user is the value for corresponding to the edit text so username dot get editable text dot to string so that we have to convert back to the string so jo uh, the thing is the uh, whatsoever you have written inside the username that will be copied and it will be converted back to the string and will be printed as a log dot e statement onto your console so username and password will be revealed as uh, user and password so now back to basics that uh, if the user and password matches the uh, it should uh, uh, you can say uh, give a output to a user that uh, it was a successful attempt or it was a failure attempt so how you can do it so here you can go i just commented out these two lines so here you can go with uh, if statement so if uh, let me first uh, get with the string user equal to 
username dot get editable text dot to string and another string as pass password dot get editable text dot to string. So I just copied uh, whatsoever written inside the editable text inside the string as user and pass. So uh, my query will be if I want to check whether user and password matches or not. So if user double equals in double quotes admin. So this is my hard coded value. So if the username and password, or if the username is admin and password is say one two three four, then log dot e it should print me with some tag name as login success right else log dot e with some error login failure Got it? So now uh, there is another thing. What if the user uh, doesn't input any of the uh, field just like username or a password? If the field is left as blank, then how you can check it? So you can check it in this manner. If user is empty or pass is empty, Then log dot e you can just write it out as username or password left empty. It cannot be left empty, right? And you can pass is an else if statement so this is a whole code so first of all when the user clicks on a button so uh, it will get the username and password uh, texts and if the text uh, it will be passed from this statement if the user is null and password is again null so it will generate a log error as username and password cannot be left empty so if any one of them has a value just like because we just rested as an or statement inside it in the if statement. So if any one of the value is uh, uh, left empty, it will uh, be uh, considered as true statement. So inside the true statement, uh, uh, or you can say uh, it will uh, be switched to the else statement if it is uh, uh, if it is uh, uh, generating a false statement. So inside the else statement, we just check whether the username and the password has these values or not. If again these values are matched, it will generate a, a log uh, statement as login success. So if the username and password doesn't matches, so it will generate an error as login failure. So let's test it out how the uh, uh, this uh, particular piece of code runs look like. So start running with this. I will open my logcat here and uh, see. So now uh, my username and password by default is empty. If I click on this submit button without inputting any username and password field, so it will suggest as login failure. Right. So if I suggest as admin and 1234 as a password to so submit, so again a login failure. So it means uh, some uh, uh, error is there inside the code because of this highlight thing. So here suggests that string values are compared with double equal to not equals uh, function. So uh, the uh, latest Android Studio has a facility to check whether uh, the string is equivalent to another string or not, not using double equal to sign because this was a traditional method which was used in 
uh, back in C or C++ for checking the whether the left side uh, is equivalent to right side value or not. So instead of this, we can just do, use dot equal. If it is dot equals with this or pass with dot equals with this. Right? Same with this dot equals with admin and dot equals with password then it should run so let's test it out running app again so submitting without username password so here you can see it runs perfectly Username and password cannot be left empty, right? Because I, we are not suggesting any uh, strings inside the username and password. So if I write anything, say one, two, uh, three, four as a username, but I left a password field and clicking on a submit button, it is it will be again showing that username and password cannot be left as empty. So uh, let's test it out as one, two, three, four, a username and password both to be same. So submitting on the same uh, thing on button, it's uh, giving you output as a login failure because username and password doesn't match. So again, changing the username with say admin, submit, so they, it will uh, give you output as login success. So it means in any of the uh, cases, so uh, it runs perfectly because of a if else if lettering structure. So if uh, one of the statement fails, it will uh, switch to another. If it is uh, again uh, uh, false uh, uh, with the previous statement, it will switch to the else statement. So it will run uh, any one of them. So it will not run all of them. So it will run any one of them, either, whether the first statement, if statement is true, or the second, if statement is true, or the else statement is true, right? So with the uh, same uh, thing that we have uh, got in mind that uh, if the user can uh, input anything, or user uh, uh, can put nothing inside the text boxes. So in this way, we can actually uh, uh, make a simple rule that uh, uh, the user has to input something inside the uh, username and password field so that it can actually match the uh, string inside the uh, username and password field. Right. So now let's take an example that how this password uh, edit text should like a password. It should not reveal what's the text inside. So for that, we have to go back into the Android, uh, sorry, activity main.xml file. So we have to, first of all, go with the edit text of a password. So here we can go for input type as uh, password as true. So here you can see if I write anything inside the password field, so it will not reveal any of the text fields, text values, right? So in this way, we can protect our password field with using Android password equal to true. So we are just activating the password field to be true. So uh, in this uh, uh, manner, we can actually uh, uh, do several ways. So we can uh, use uh, this conditional statements, we can use also the looping statements, we can use any of the statement that is uh, was considered inside the C or C++ languages. Right. So let's take an example that if we want to print uh, uh, a table of any number inside the, uh, say, Android, uh, Android application. So how we can do it? So first of all, I have to modify some uh, the output fields, because I don't want any of the fields to be shown here so i have to first of all change the username as say input value and edit text obvious with this so here i'll say enter some value and i don't require any of the text views and edit 
text in the next line because I don't need it. And the button will be on row one, not in a row two. So here I will suggest what will be the value through which I can make a table of that value. And after summation, I should print all the tables uh, up to 10 value, right? So I need a text view uh, just below this button. So here I will go with the text view. Layout as height, wrap text, as uh, width, as wrap text, and uh, text size as say 20 dp, as some text as say test. So this test will be replaced by the table for the particular value. So obvious I need a ID because I want to update the field inside the text view. So I will say as a table. So this is a text view. And uh, uh, this will be uh, on uh, uh, layout column will be zero. Uh, row will be two and call span will be two. So here the text view is set just below the submit button. So what we uh, do is we just enter some value inside the text, edit uh, text, submit will be able to read the value. And after that, it should compute the table corresponding to the value. And the output will be shown inside the text view. So here you can do this thing. So we don't have password as a dead text. So we just eliminate the password. We do have a button. So we already bind it, that thing. So uh, password field is not there. So this all thing will go off. So now we can start with the loop statement because now this user is having a value stored inside the edit text, right? So here I will start with the for loop for int i is zero, i is less than, uh, not with zero, you can initialize with one, i is less than equals 10, i plus plus. So this is a for statement and inside the for statement we have to, uh, you can say, uh, re-enter the text inside the text view. So inside the text view, I want uh, the output uh, the uh, of a uh, particular number table. So my text view, I have not bounded the text view. So text view as say T1, again, I have to bind T1 equal to text view find view by id r dot id dot uh, what was the name it was table so i have bonded uh, uh, the table with t1 so inside the for loop i will call t1 with not as set text but as a append because it will append new line in each and every step. So append as first of all, I have to get the integer part of this. So this is an integer part of a user and uh, append user multiply by i. But all of the thing should be converted back to string because this append and set text works on a string. So here you can see that we have a for loop 
with initialized value as i1, i less than 10, i plus plus, we are appending uh, each, uh, each line of t1 with new value as user multiplied by i. This user is actually a text inside the edit text. And after that, it will be multiplied with the value of i. And after that, we have to put a slash n for creating a new line also. So let's test it out running the same thing on my smartphone. So here uh, I will suggest as value as three, so submit button. So it will print three, six, nine, 10, uh, 12, 15, 18, and every, uh, everything. So here it, it is saying that uh, the test is uh, uh, shown to you because we are using our append. So it will not delete uh, the content which is there inside the text views. So uh, first of all, we have to eliminate the text, the default text, which we have suggested in the XML file. So we just delete those lines so that the text uh, view uh, will be empty and the new empty will append all the new values, right? So it will append all the new values which was there inside this. So let's test it out the same thing. So it will not be able to append the uh, test uh, string inside the text view. So here you can see if I write four and submit button, so four, uh, the table of four will be printed up to 10. But what if, if I again change the value as say five? So what happens? So uh, if I click submit button, so it will append again all the values. So it means that uh, the uh, uh, your T1, that is your text view, is actually appending all the new values inside the same text view but it will not be able to delete the previous value. Now what you can do that uh, if you want to delete the previous value and uh, again uh, print the new value, you have to again uh, clear all the contents inside the text view. So how you can do it? Just add a line before for, you can go for t1 dot set text with null. So it will delete all the values inside the text view. So let's test it out running on my smartphone. Input value as four, submit, so it will print the value of uh, uh, the table of four. If I put eight, submit, so see, the previous value will be deleted and the new value will be printed. So in this way, you can uh, actually test it out that how uh, and what kind of application you want. You can go with any of the, say, uh, conditional statements and looping statements and any other thing. So the main crux of this thing is that you have to go with two uh, files. One will be the XML file and another is the Java file. XML file is only for UI uh, preparation and other Java file is for a backend where you can actually get the response from a UI. So uh, for binding those UI uh, variables with the Java variables, you have to suggest the IDs inside the XML. And after that, uh, you have to bind those IDs of XML with the Java uh, 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 objects. After binding that, you can call any of the listeners you want. If, if it is a button, obvious, there is a click listener for that. Inside the click listener, you can do anything. So you can uh, go with the simple code also, or you can do uh, left as a empty if you don't perform, uh, want, don't want to perform any action. So in this way, you can do anything. You can write uh, your conditional statement. You can use for uh, looping statements. You can use uh, any of the looping statements like for while, do while, uh, uh, your switch statement, uh, conditional statements, if, if else, lettering if, or you can use any recursion method also, or you can uh, define any of the functions uh, you can uh, if you want to recall. So if you want uh, to have this kind of a thing inside uh, any other function, you can uh, actually define any function inside the uh, inside this main activity. So uh, in the later sessions, you will be able to uh, recall that uh, uh, just I just uh, give you a glimpse about the layouts. So what kind of uh, different layouts are there? 
and how we can actually uh, uh, make a, a beautiful layout of that and after that uh, uh, a separate session will be there for uh, regarding uh, 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 the, the different activities that how we can actually pass a value from one activity from a, to another activity so uh, th that's uh, actually a, a good thing to know that uh, uh, if there are two different java files then how one java file is able to read the uh, you can say variables in the another java files so that's actually a good question so you can think of that how our two files can actually talk to each other right and after that uh, there is some uh, sessions regarding uh, your multimedia that how you can actually uh, add some uh, uh, images and videos and how you can actually interact with the uh, menus so that's a whole thing and after that uh, we will uh, talk about some uh, uh, internal uh, uh, share preferences method on which the, in which we can uh, actually uh, save our data permanently inside our smartphone. So this is just an overview that how uh, the first application should like and uh, obvious with the how we can initiate with the loop statements with the conditional statements and everything. So this was from my part. If you have any doubts regarding this thing uh, that how the Android uh, uh, project should like how the Android works and uh, uh, how we can write it or actually I have just viewed it uh, to you. So if you have any doubts regarding this, you can actually uh, ping me out and you can ask me any question. Okay, so uh, there is some practice session going on. Uh, you can actually uh, take a part in this. So uh, what you can do is uh, just write a code for a um, table. Right. So how a table look, looks like, just like this one, if I input a value as something and submit it back, it will print uh, all the values corresponding to the uh, number. So your question or you can say your practice session is like, I want to print the whole table as 8 into 1 equal to 2, 8 into 2 equal to 16, 8 into 3 equal to 24 and so on. So how you can actually print all the values inside this text view? with all the tables or you can say all the uh, things uh, associated with the table inside the text view. So that's uh, actually a practice session. You can actually test it out. So whether uh, you are, uh, your application is working or not perfectly, so you can try it out. If the for loop is able to uh, print all the values, then you can actually change the for loop with while and do while statements also. So just take, uh, uh, take your time and uh, do the uh, uh, experiment as to convert uh, the for loop with the while statement and the do while statements and just have a look that uh, whether there is any change inside the uh, Android uh, uh, application or not. So uh, I'm still open for the questions. If you have any queries, you can actually ping me. D4 can I come in? Yes, easy, Landra. Do you have any queries? Just speak it out, please. That's easy, Landra. <laughs> Any questions? No, ma'am.
So will be you able to perform Android application by your own? Yes, yes. Easy, I'm asking a question to you. Hello. Hello. Am I audible to you? G7 console? CGC console? volume coming? Yes, CGC. If you have any queries, you can ask me right now. Can you hear me, CGC? I am not sure if you are Actually, they are not willing to participate. That is why that's the whole problem. Otherwise, you sorry, made up the car. Welcome. That is why I'm giving uh, them time to keep a implement core. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. So let's just wait for another five or ten minutes, then we can wind up. No questions, sorry. Hmm. So you can uh, may type card those can there be CGC core and call AKGC core. Okay, if you have any doubts, you can ask here. So this code download for making me insert the system to the card systems are used karee rahe hain nahi hoga nahi systems answer nahi dekhi rahe hain chal jayega aise to kuch nahi nahi chalega jisko karna ho wo kar hi
और सारे मोबाइल फोन में कैमरे में उसमें प्रैक्टिस सेशन लाइसेंस के लिए बोल रहे हैं ओके गाइस सो दैट वाज फ्रॉम माय साइड सो वी विल मीट टुमारो सो टुमारो वी विल स्टार्ट विद द द लेयर टेक्निक्स द डिजाइनिंग स्टाइल्स एंड द थीम सेशन बाय 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 मैम वंदना फ्रॉम सॉफ्ट सोल्यूशंस मोहाली so she will be teaching you the layout techniques what are different layout techniques just just i just uh, uh, told you about the relative layout the linear layout and the other layouts designing styles and with the themes she will tell you about uh, this and uh, the session will start at 10 am tomorrow sharp so it will be uh, winded up uh, till 11:30 am so i hope you will be able to uh, come on this session and uh, take a part in this uh, android uh, uh, short term course ICT based course. So uh, let's take a, a, a day off uh, so that uh, we can uh, come tomorrow. And uh, if you have any queries, you can actually uh, write down on the Hangouts uh, WhatsApp Messenger if you have any queries uh, till now. So I will uh, reply offline. So so that's it from my side. So we'll uh, keep in touch uh, with you tomorrow. So uh, just be here at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. Thank you.